Hey guys, in this video, we'll be looking at variation. We are specifically going to compare between continuous variation and discontinuous variation. First, let's define variation. Variation is a difference in characteristics within the same population of species. What do we mean by a difference in characteristics? If you just take a look at the people around you, whether you're at home with your family or whether you're at school or whether you're at work, you will notice that although you are looking at all human beings, each of us have a different look. That is, whether we are talking about hair, some may have curly hair, some may have straight hair, whether you're talking about eye color, some may have dark brown eye color, some may have blue eyes, and whether you're talking about ears, some may have a free earlobe, some may have the attached earlobe. You will notice there are small differences in each characteristic. And this is what we call variation. This exists in the plant world as well. You will notice that some trees are very tall, some trees are very short, some trees have straight leaves, some trees have curly leaves with rough edges. These are all examples of variation. Now let's look at the difference between continuous and discontinuous variation. In continuous variation, the difference in characteristics is gradual. What do we mean by this? Take height for instance. If you have someone who is 145 centimeters tall and then you have another person who is 180 centimeters tall, there are still any number of heights between 145 and 180. For example, somebody can be 150, 150 cm tall, somebody else could be 175.3 cm tall. There is any number of heights between 145 and 180 cm. This is known as a gradual difference in characteristics. And everything in between is called an intermediate characteristics. Therefore, in continuous variation, we do have intermediate characteristics. Whereas in this continuous variation, the change is distinct. For example, if we look at blood groups, we have either blood group O, A, B or AB. We don't have any characteristic in between. There is nothing between O and A or A and B or B and AB. Therefore, we say that the changes in the characteristics are very distinct. There are no intermediate characteristics, nothing in between these characteristics. Another example of this continuous variation is the hitchhiker thumb. Some people have the ability to bend this portion of their thumb all the way to 90 degrees and that is called the hitchhiker thumb. I do not have a hitchhiker thumb. By the way guys, since we are here, if you are getting any value from this video, please do me a favor and hit the like button. Really does help the channel. Thank you very much for doing that. Let's get on with the video. In continuous variation, the characteristics are usually quantitative. This means that you can actually quantify the characteristics, such as height. Let's look at height again. We can quantify the height of a person as 145 centimeters or 180 centimeters. We can assign a value to this characteristic. Whereas, for discontinuous variation, the characteristic is usually qualitative, such as blood group. This is not quantifiable. We cannot quantify blood group. Another example would be the ability to roll tongue. This is the ability to roll tongue. You either can roll your tongue or you cannot roll your tongue. There is nothing in between and this is not quantifiable. You cannot assign a value to this characteristic. Therefore, it is a discontinuous variation. In continuous variation, the number of genes controlling the characteristics is usually more than one. There are usually many genes that are controlling the characteristics such as height and weight. Whereas for discontinuous variation, there is usually only one gene responsible for the characteristic. Again, we can look at the example of blood group. Blood group is controlled by a single gene that has three alleles, that is IO, IA and IB. This is controlled by one gene. Characteristics that show continuous variation are usually influenced by environmental factors, such as height. Even though you may have genes to grow very tall, if you do not have the required nutrients, you need to take in enough carbohydrates, you need enough fats, you need enough proteins, 
as well as all the other classes of food. You need to be supplied with the proper nutrition to grow to the height that your genes will allow you to grow to. Without the proper nutrition, even if you have genes, you may not grow to the height that your genes will allow you to grow to. Characteristics that show discontinuous variation are usually not influenced by environmental factors. For example, the blood group is completely controlled by the genes. No matter what you eat, you will not change the blood group that is determined by your genes. The same goes for, for example, eye color. Your eye color is not going to change based on what you eat. This is a phenotypic expression of your genotype. There is nothing you can do to change that. When it comes to distribution, characteristics that show continuous variation usually have a normal distribution. You can take height for example. If you have a large group of people, if you compare yourself with a large group of people, normally you will have most people within an average height most people will sit somewhere in the middle. You will have some people who are very tall and you will have very few people who are very short. And so when we draw the number of individuals here against the characteristic, you will find that the graph that is formed has a bell shape. This is a bell shape curve and this is known as the normal distribution. In the normal distribution, most of the population have the characteristic at about the mean value. A very small portion of the population will occupy the extreme values. Whereas when it comes to discontinuous variation, the type of distribution is usually discrete distribution. This is to say that we don't have a continuous line like normal distribution. Let's look at blood group again. Let's look at number of individuals against blood group. Let's say you have blood group O, you have this many people and then blood group A, you have this many people. So you can see this is not a continuous graph. There is a break in between because there is no value between O and A. It's either O or A or B or AB. This is a discrete distribution. Examples of continuous variation are such as height and weight. And examples of discontinuous variation are such as blood group, the ability to roll tongue, eye color, as well as fingerprint pattern. To summarize very quickly, continuous variation involves characteristics which have intermediate characteristics. That means we have values in between and they're usually quantitative. You can quantify these characteristics. Discontinuous variation usually involves characteristics that do not have any intermediate characteristics. They are distinct characteristics. These characteristics are usually not quantifiable, such as blood group. If you enjoy videos like this, guys, do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one video a week. I'll see you guys in the next video.